NVIDIA is going to be super damn important for Monday for investors, uh, you know, mostly investors because traders, you know, we trade both sides of the market. But if, t if NVIDIA fails to lose uh, the 20 day moving, a uh, 10 day moving average here, we can get a measured move here. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody's having an absolutely phenomenal weekend. Hope everybody's having fun, enjoying themselves, and more important, uh, continuing to smile. Continuing to smile, that's what life is all about and staying healthy. For all you guys who are brand new to the channel, welcome, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. If you are new, please be kind and share, like. Uh, most important, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, we do this uh, Monday through uh, Wednesday, and again on the weekends to kind of give you uh, an unbiased tour of uh, what we believe is going to happen next on a day-by-day, case-by-case, trade-by-trade uh, study of the stock market. So hopefully everybody is doing well. Again, uh, welcome aboard. So let's talk about it. So if you look at the indexes uh, for the week, you're not going to get uh, a lot of sense of you know how the market played out. Uh, you have the Dow down 1.7%. You have the S&P and the NASDAQ down 1.4% uh, for the week, which is again, not a bad thing whatsoever, because again, uh, we've had this just absolutely tremendous run of the markets. Uh, we got the back test that we've been calling for uh, for about you know for about three four days now just because again we needed these stock prices to reset to kind of get their deep breaths uh, back to kind of get the composure back to get their sea legs back and then start taking out higher prices. Here's the little kicker, right? Sometimes what we think is going to happen next uh, sometimes doesn't happen, right? And this is where uh, we adjust as traders, uh, you adjust as investors, you you pay, make contingency plans and see what potentially could happen next if your thesis uh, doesn't start playing out. And that's a very, very important thing to be uh, super, have the super ability to adapt on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if you are uh, an aggressive uh, intraday trader. And what I like what we did see was for the first you know three, four days, we pulled in very, very nicely. By Thursday, if you guys remember, we had a nice turnaround, right? We had a really nice turnaround and we reclaimed back uh, the 10 day moving average on the queues and we got rejected right back at the top of the level but the good part was coming into friday's session was that majority of stocks closed at the top of the range because they mirrored the nasdaq 100 if you look at for, uh, thursday's session you can see here we talked about even on uh the video on thursday that the bulls needed to reclaim back this 366.30s level to start moving higher. Uh, for the SPY, you know, for the SPY, you kind of had the same thing, right? The SPY uh, needed to re reclaim this 437 level. But the problem is the market, and this is what we talk about, the market is the greatest reality show that's not on television. It doesn't have to do anything that you 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 want it to do or, or you think it's going to do it. Again, this is where uh, we adapt as traders. And the one thing that I did like, again, like I mentioned, we did get the back test. What I did not like going into this new week coming up on Monday is we rejected it on the five day moving average closing at the top of the range on Thursday. And let me, let me show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So let's start off with the cues, right? Here's the cues. Uh, we talked about Thursday night that we needed to reclaim 366. We did not do so. If you look to start looking at the individual stocks that we started talking about, right? Microsoft mirrored the NASDAQ 100 got rejected off the five-day moving average on Thursday, did not, right, did not take out, did not reclaim uh, the five-day moving average. A name like Apple, right, a name like Apple started building very, very strong, never sold off, but, you know, didn't really quite price improve on Friday's session. Amazon continues to be very, very strong, right, and we had some, you know, pretty decent moves uh, through Amazon uh, throughout the week of, you know, Thursday, Friday, uh, especially Friday, we had a really, really great uh, remount on Amazon, but the point is, again, they kind of stalled out at the top of the channels. But if you look at the biggest high flyers, what really drove the NASDAQ 100 this, uh, this in the last couple of weeks, you have NVIDIA, right? You have NVIDIA and you have Tesla. Now, usually, you know, usually the stock market is not going to be, uh, you know, sink or swim because Tesla or, or NVIDIA are, are tired uh, or, you know, or needing a, a further back test. 
But in this case, point, uh, point of reference, you kind of want to pay attention to these two symbols because not only do they get their sell-off, right? Do they get their three, four day sell-off, they didn't price improve all week. And that's a very, very important thing. And sometimes, you know, we talk about the gravity trade and we call it a great, absolutely great pivot on uh, Tesla on Wednesday, uh, on Friday, uh, excuse me, on Thursday. And then on Friday, we caught another one to the, to the downside as well. But the fail, though, we're going to use Tesla as a case point. They both failed to reclaim the five-day moving average while putting in an inside day. That's not a good thing, right? That's absolutely not a good thing. Uh, just from the case-by-case. Case. You, know, you know, nobody's talking about two, three years down the line, two, three weeks down the line. Just from the case-by-case case basis, kind of leading into the next day. And when you have uh, an engulfing candle, to, you know, engulfing candle that reclaim the 10-day moving average, and the next day does not price improve and puts in a middle candle, you know, forcing it pretty much an inside day, then you have a you know, then you have a realistic possibility of a potential you know potential further pullback in, in those shares. So for Tesla, for example, I you know I'm watching. I always watch Tesla both ways. I, I don't have a bias on Tesla. Matter of fact, I trade both so, uh, you know, all stocks both ways. But here is makes a very interesting scenario on Tesla. Number one, we know the market didn't price uh, price improve back over the five day moving average, neither did Tesla. We know Tesla had a longer back test and a, a lot of names especially did not recover on Friday session. So we know that and especially down another $8. The question is on Tesla, what happens next? So um, I'm definitely watching both sides of the metrics. That's the whole point of having an inside day. Uh, if they could reclaim back the five day moving average, then yeah, I do believe we can get back to those recent 277 highs. But here's the point of reference that we have to pay attention to and based on how the market reacts on Monday, we have a very, very clear channel here on the bottom. Everybody see that, guys? You have the you have the the previous June lows on the five day moving average, and you have last week's lows are kind of mirroring each other. That's why you kind of see this little quote unquote baby double bottom uh, that was put in on Thursday's session. But here's the deal: if they can't reclaim the five day moving average, and they do start violating back this June. Uh, this June lows, right? That tested twice. Then yeah, I mean, look how much room you have. You have you have literally another, uh, you know, roughly around 20 points down to the downside. I mean, there, there's a lot of value uh, on Tesla going into this week on both sides. And if you are uh, an intraday trader, if you are an aggressive uh, trader, and you're like me, you trade both channels. Again, the five will set it back to uh, reclaiming the five will set it back to uh, the June highs. But this baby this baby channel here that was started on June the 15th and held on Thursday, if it starts losing this bottom channel here, then yeah, we can get a move all the way back down to 237, 234, something to watch for. A name like NVIDIA, right? And here's a couple of point of reference on NVIDIA that we have to pay attention to this week as well, okay? So like Tesla, NVIDIA had an absolute uh, phenomenal parabolic run, okay? Everybody knows the story here. They came out earnings uh, the stock literally went from you know 398 uh, all the way to 440. That's a big, big move in about a month. Okay, but now you can see here it's starting to, you know, start putting it a, put start putting it a slow right, a very, very slow exhaustion cycle. And as you can see here, you have four days in a row of lower highs. Here's a high, lower high, lower high, lower high. And this and the reason why this lower high is is should be. It should be monitored, especially going into Monday or Tuesday session. Unlike everything else that had at least a bit of a snapback on Thursday, it really did not, and it didn't take out the previous day's high. And you can see here, it closed right on the 10-day moving average. So if you ever watched uh, the PS60 workshops or you know any videos, you kind of know uh, you kind of know the importance, at least for me, uh, for the 10-day moving average. I call it the birth of the trade. The five days is the shortest term. Uh, time frame that shows who have control of the shortest term, but this is a nice barometer of who may have control to the intermediate, right? So if if Nvidia holds on Monday the, the ten day moving average and starts reclaiming the five, it's all great, right? Everything that I'm about to say kind of goes away. But here's the you know here's the key takeaways from Nvidia. It didn't price improve all week. Has four days in a row of lower highs. It didn't. It failed to reclaim the five day moving average. And again, you can make a you can you can make a case then. Uh, virtually every single stock did not, but it got sold off after its investors day. And that's a catalyst, right? That is, uh, that separates it more from like a Microsoft that separates it more uh, from an Amazon. It actually has a catalyst they, that they actually sold. Now here's the key, right? Here's the key. 
if it can start losing the 10 day moving average, everybody see this guys, if it can start losing the 10 day moving average, that's where the big value is. Because if you look at the bottom of the channel all the way here and your next measure potential for a, a back test, you know, you're talking about a 403, 400 area. So the video is going to be super damn important for Monday for investors, uh, you know, mostly investors because traders, you know, we trade both sides of the market. But if, t if NVIDIA fails to lose uh, the 20 day moving, a uh, 10 day moving average here, we can get a measured move here uh, going into the 20. Uh, another big, big uh, kind of takeaway from the macro level uh, of the market going into this week, well, the civil unrest. If you guys remember when the whole U Ukraine uh, Russia uh, war started, uh, the markets were very volatile. Uh, up and down, up and down, up and down uh, over the weekend. I think I believe it started on Friday. Uh, you had you know a civil unrest. You had mercenaries uh, trying to get to Moscow. I believe they um, they captured a city on the way to Moscow. Uh, you know you know uh, Putin is not is a wild card. You know he has stockpiles of nuclear weapons. You know we don't know how this is going to end. And again, the market just doesn't like uh, uncertainty. And if they start talking about uh, more aggressive ways. Again, I personally didn't believe the first time I heard Russia was going to invade in Ukraine, but here we are, right? So when this guy starts talking about uh, nuclear weapons and stockpiling them and using them, you know, that's a very, very uh, scary situation, you know, you know, and it can spill over like a domino effect uh, very, very quickly. So we have to see how the market uh, reacts to, uh, it has to react to uh, the news as well. So obviously that's going to play a, a big case into what we see uh, in names like Tesla, what we see uh, in names uh, like NVIDIA. Uh, the one group that is uh, holding up very, very well is uh, the Bitcoin, right? The Bitcoin names, uh, especially uh, names uh, like Mara. Okay, Mara is incredibly, incredibly close uh, to the top of the channel break. Okay, it tested that level and just like everything else towards the end of the day got sold off. Uh, names like Riot, right? They, they're, they're starting to look pretty good and getting above the channels. Uh, Amazon has definitely stood out uh, over the last three, four days, big as we, you know, we've been watching this video, big heavy accumulation, short term, um, short term uh, call buying. When the stock was at 27, they were coming for the 30s. When the stock was at 30, uh, they couldn't sell off the stock. They finally sold it back a little bit into the close, but they're coming for the July 40s. Something definitely to watch, especially if the market holds. So going into this week, again, uh, very, very specific numbers, guys. We talk specifics, we don't talk random, we don't sp speak general. We speak very, very specific numbers. To the upside, the Qs need to reclaim uh, 366.30s. The five-day moving average should go back to recent highs. But here's the bottom of the channel here, guys. And let's write this down. Uh, 360. You can see a 360 held on Thursday, 360 held again on Friday. If we start losing the 360 area, expect a further back test. So you guys should be set, okay? You, we don't trade in generalities. We don't trade uh, in hypotheticals. We don't trade on anticipation. We trade on very, very specific levels. We don't anticipate, we don't guess, we don't try to be smart. We wait for those levels to be confirmed. And when they do confirm, usually price action follows through. So I'm definitely watching Tesla. I am definitely watching the video uh, on both sides, uh, but especially to the downside, I am definitely watching uh, the Bitcoin names uh, to kind of start uh, waking up again. And it's very, very important to kind of let the market uh, dictate Monday. I think a lot of traders, uh, they wake up uh, Monday morning and they're all, you know, gung-ho, especially new traders. Is it a new week? Is it Monday yet? I'm ready to trade. I love trading. And then you realize 15 minutes after the open, they're continuously doing the same things uh, over and over again and they, they can't get anywhere. Guys, let the market speak to us, okay? Let the market tell us in the first 30, 40 minutes what's going to happen. If there's a trend, can that trend be sustainable? Can they price improve on that, tra uh, on that trend? Is the market going to continue uh, to kind of back test and start losing the ranges we just talked about. These are all things to be determined, but the key is let the noise die out Monday mornings. It's very, very important. Let the noise die out. Let the market pick a theme, let it pick a trend, and let it confirm on the 10 o'clock channels, and we should get much more clarity. Guys, God bless. Hope everybody is having a wonderful life, wonderful summer. Hope everybody's healthy, happy, and with God's help, I will see you all on Monday. Take care, everybody.